praise the Lord. I'm your host, Elder Gregory Newsom with the Faith in God and I TV. God bless you. We thank God for his goodness and his mercy to us forever. Cause this face to shine upon us again. And we're thankful and we're grateful to the Lord for the things that He has done. And so we dare not give Him the glory for the things He has done. And that's a, a topic in itself. So we want to. Get ready to get started with our Bible study today. We uh, started a little delayed due to uh, some other things. We were just needful things we needed to take care of. Um, we thank and praise God that we had the opportunity to get back on uh, to share a word of encouragement for the people of God. And so that's what we're here to do in 2021 if the Lord is real. And we know it's the Lord's will that we carry out his commission. But we think if the Lord's will, there's some other things we desire to do in addition to what the Lord would have us to do on the broadcast. So we want to increase in the things that we desire to do for the kingdom work. And that's what we're talking about. And so we want to thank the people of God to encourage be uplifted uh, in the God of your salvation. Don't be uplifted in yourself, but be lifted up in the God of your salvation. And so we had a great worship service on yesterday. Uh, we thank God for our pastor. And we want to give honor to God and turn our life uh, to our own pastor, Bishop Nurse and to Lady Nurse and to my own wife, Miss Mary Newton, and to the entire Pentecost Power Church family. This is going to be our sidebar, but we want to thank the people of God. Um, we want to say we had a, a great time in the Lord. We didn't enjoy ourselves, but we enjoyed the Lord uh, giving us the word of God. And so, yeah, we definitely, you know, uh, you know, thank God for the sharing of the word from our leaders, you know, just, you know, you know, reminding us, you know, of a lot of uh, things that you know, we need to keep in the forefront of our mind, you know, and, uh, you know, and you know, we gotta let God uh, let him do it, and uh, put him first. We can lay aside things when we have a better understanding of the Word of God. Because all of us, at some point, uh, may have done things um, due to not knowing, due to uh, having been taught, due to just a lack of understanding. And so we dare not stand on our judgment in the light of that particular situation. But the Bible did tell us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so that's what we desire to do. So on my sidebar, we're going to talk about uh, not only growing in the grace of God, but we want to talk about church discipline. That's the topic that I'm seeing even among the apostolics that uh, we uh, don't push uh, like we used to. I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just telling you I've been ministering a long time. And uh, one thing about it, as long as you got uh, spiritual vision and natural vision, uh, 
it won't fail you when God is showing you uh, that we need to return back to him. We need to return back to the Lord in church discipline. Okay? And people uh, say, well, what is church discipline? You know, if you're a disciple, you should be disciplined. It's really not that easy. Now, we're going to talk about these things today in our next week. This is going to be a fourth segment. This is one of my, my segments that I kind of been releasing. So, uh, we want to talk about, uh, we're going to start with these backwards. That it's four divisions of this. So this is going to take, this week is going to be talking about church discipline, and uh, we'll talk about the other ones later, but it's the three other ones. But today, and this week, we're going to be on that topic of church discipline, and uh, bishops and pastors and elders, thank you. <laughs> we need to stay with the proper doctrine. Difficult to say with the Boston Doctrine when uh, we have pressure. <laughs> and what I mean by that, sometimes we have pressure because, you know, people won't come to the church because, you know, they say you're legalism, you know, you're being too strict and you're not, you know, you're not being understanding. But we want to help open up your understanding of this church discipline. First scripture we want to call, uh, we're going to go to First Corinthians. Uh, that's the first one I want to call. And, uh, let's just go there with you. And I'm not sorry about it. We're going to get ready to go into a word of prayer and acknowledge God. But I want to have you go to this scripture and be waiting there. We're going to do the prayer. Okay? So, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, say the word of prayer. But I want you all to just stay with me here. You know, short day. Uh, we'll do some later some hour, but we need you to stay with us uh, to get the stuff of this. So we're gonna pick it right back up Wednesday and have a second day time with us as we talk about uh, her discipline. Okay. And so let us uh, go away uh, and look to the Lord for direction today. Let us pray. Uh, most precious Father in heaven, in Jesus' name. Oh God, as we come before your throne and before you, oh God, we thank you for your blessing that you have bestowed upon us and your people. We give you glory, we give you praise, we give you honor. I want to thank you, oh God, for blessing us with another day of grace and mercy that we can call upon your holy name for, oh God, strength and deliverance. And Father, for forgiveness, oh God, as we forgive others that trespass against us. Bless the hear of God that we can that they will become doers of your word. Encourage the hearts of those that are listening, and, oh God, that are, oh God, sharing your comments and remarks, oh God, concerning this topic. We welcome the open forum session, God, concerning church discipline. And as we pray, direct us as we, oh God, seek you for more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, that we may know how to go in and out from amongst our people. Oh Lord, for thy people are great people. We thank you and we praise you. We pray, God, you will bless the saints. Bless, O oh God, the, O oh God, visitors, and O oh God, those, O oh God, that desire, O oh God, to grow in the knowledge of God. Bless them now in the throne path. In the name of Jesus, look on our bishop, our first lady, and all the faithful Pentecostal Thomas Church, look on our mother flowers, mother here, and all of our precious mothers, the sick that are, those that are shut in, even those behind prison walls, those in, O oh God, facilities, O oh God, of, O oh God, elder care. We pray that your blood will cover, even during this time of COVID. Lord, let your blood cover us, God. We know the best vaccine is the blood of Jesus. And Father, we plead the blood now that you will cover each and every one, even those that are with Let your blood cover them now that they can have faith in God. And Father, that's where we put our trust today. And Father, we give you all the glory on your praise. And we claim a great deliverance by faith. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray for the glory of God. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Praise God. So we thank God for uh, the word of the Lord, uh, the word of prayer. We thank God for just touching and encouraging you uh, amongst our eyes as uh, we are kind of, I'll share this before we get into the scripture. We have people from everywhere calling us um, to come share a word, and that has been a door that has opened people in the United States, people outside the United States. I've gotten three invites uh, out of the country last year, and this year I got 
got one invite out of the country. And then I've gotten several invites uh, in the United States. And so I just want to say I thank God uh, for the opportunity and the blessing and the doors that he has opened up in my life. And so I want to give God thanks and praise for the opportunity. Um, I had to uh, punch down the road due to the COVID virus, but you all, we desire your prayer that you would pray for Elder Newsom, that he would uh, do the will of the Lord and that we would uh, pay humble before the feet of Jesus, that he might be glorified. And that, I think that's some, been some of the biggest problems with some of our uh, apostles and preachers and uh, those that's been called is they uh, forgot who's in charge. And uh, we know God is in control. And so we want to honor God in all that we do. And we want to stay in a humilitized uh, state of mind that he might uh, do what he needs to do through our lives. And so let me say this. Let's go to church discipline. First Corinthians chapter 14. We're going to go to uh, 34 because this is a very controversial one. It says, Let your women keep silent in the churches, for it is not permitted un uh, unto them to speak, uh, but are commanded to be under obedience. Also, uh, it says the law. And if any will learn anything, let them ask their husband at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, we take this the wrong way. Women have a lot to say in the church. And uh, when I first got in the church, uh, the mother taught me some things. And so this doesn't mean that women cannot uh, talk in the church. This is just dealing with an order uh, of a decorum type form uh, for uh, things that need to be addressed in the church. This just didn't mean women shouldn't speak in church service today. Because otherwise, uh, we would have a problem, right? And uh, they were talking about women praying in public and prophesying, you know, praying and prophesying in public worship. And so, you know, uh, and so we have to look at, you know, uh, women have contributed uh, greatly in our lives. You know, I like it in church and my mom, I like it in church and Mother Flowers, Mother Aaron, just the mothers in the church, you know, the real mothers. We ain't talking about somebody that want to be cute, but, you know, we talking about the real mothers that just big mothers in the church. You know, they not trying to get no accolades. They just doing what God called them to do. And uh, I'll say this, and then we're going to keep going about church discipline. I got to share this. When I first got saved and got in the church, one of the mothers came to me and told me, take your earring out your ear. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I appreciate that. You know, I, I appreciate the, you know, people say everybody can't handle that, though. So I'm going to say that in, in an encouraging way. Everybody can't handle that. So you got to know, you know, you got to be led of God, you know, who you can approach like that. Because you can't approach everybody like that. But I'm glad she approached me like that. Because of the viewpoint is I wanted to be saved. Uh, I wanted to please God. And I wanted to know more about uh, not only God, but holiness, you know. And we can't know more about God until we understand that he's holy. And so that's what the mother was trying to teach me is that, you know, we serve in a holy God, and it's not the outward adornment, you know, that we should be, you know, so much concerned about. And Jesus talked about the scribes and the Pharisees. He wasn't uh, condemning them for their uh, form. Or, or, or how they uh, dress, you know, that's all good. That you're supposed to uh, have things in order, you know, in terms of how you look. But we can't put more emphasis and more validation on that than we do the inside. And so that's what the most important thing is. But I'm glad she approached me and told me to take the earring out of the air. I took it out. I was obedient. We're in a time now where people are not obedient in the church. You tell them that they got too much uh, this or that or not enough this or that, they will just act like they don't hear the mother. And so I'm just glad, you know, that I adhere to the mothers in the church. And I'm not talking about just brothers only. You got sisters that ain't listening to the mothers in the church. They do the same. 
But I want to say this to make a long story short. That's not really what I wanted to talk about, right? Just get it off there as a sidebar to share with you that without obedience and without compliance, you know, you really, you're really not going to really grow the way God desires for you to grow. And so we want to grow according to how God wants to grow individuals in the kingdom world. And the only way we're going to do that is we got to follow the word of God. And so women have been a great asset to ministry in the church. Uh, Paul said, help them women that uh, that labor in God. So uh, women are a great asset. And so I thank God for our evangelists, our ministers. You know, Bishop kind of was touching on some stuff yesterday about church order. It's only you, you know, being yourself. It's an order, praise God. But if you a woman and you got your old dress on and you got your leg kicked up like you a man, there there's something that's not aesthetically right about that. So so I, I have to agree uh wholeheartedly because the word of God is right and the way my bishop was preaching and teaching yesterday, he was going according to the apostle's teaching. So that's what we need to stay on. We need to do more of that stuff. Uh, we can't just hammer on it every now and then. Looks like now we need to hammer on it almost every day. <laughs> Praise God. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be the one, you know, to project that, but it looks like people got dull dull hearing. And so we need to bring you know, bring it to the forefront so they can understand that God is calling for holy. Right? And so women are a given spiritual gift and they are encouraged to exercise them in the body of Christ. So when we look at this scripture, people that don't understand the revelation of the scripture, saying women can't share, women can't talk in the church, they really don't understand Bible and the principles of the teaching of the apostles. It just has to be done in order, praise God. And so as long as it's done decently and in order, we're going to read down to 39 and 40 of the Corinthians. You know, it got to be done decently and in order. And that's the key. Uh, to whether it be men or women in the church operating, things must be done decently and they must be done in order. Because when we don't do things decently and in order, it's going to come back to bite us. So people going to look at the word of God and say, you know what, that's not right. And then you can try to make it right all you want to, it's still wrong because the Bible says wrong. All right? And so my thing is, how the Bible says wrong? You know, the Bible is right and somebody's wrong. Because some don't believe, it don't make the, uh, you know, the word of God or the faith of God a non effect. And so, just because you don't agree with the word, don't change what the Bible says. Because you will not change the Bible, praise God. So I want to say this. It says, it's a change for them to speak in the church. And he says, what came the word of God out to you, or it came uh, unto you only? If a man thinks himself to be a prophet, or let him acknowledge uh that the things that I write unto you are commandments of the Lord. He says, but if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. And this is exactly what I want to get to. You know, sometimes we just don't have knowledge. Ignorant is not a bad word. Sometimes when it comes to church discipline, some people are not disciplined because they just don't know. And this is why I found it to be a great help in the church. Because when I first got in the church and wasn't saved, and I walked in that church disrespecting the house of God, you know, with my earring on, with my hat on my head, you know, you know how we did. And, uh, you know, we weren't taught church etiquette. And so the first thing, somebody that no church etiquette needs to tell me. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, I hope I'm not sounding, you know, I hope I'm being, being nice today. Praise God. Somebody needs to tell me that I'm not, you know, uh, doing things proper. Because if, if you let me go around months and months on end doing stuff that you know is wrong and you know it's wrong and you you know right from wrong and I don't and you don't tell me. Oh, Lord, I'm mercy. I just find out, you know, if you don't tell me, it's a difference now if I know better. You didn't approach me before. But I know. Mothers have approached some people, and, uh, you know, they just don't care. That's one thing. But it's another thing, me being brand new to the ministry, and I don't know what's going on. 
I think you need to tell me. Praise the Lord. Don't be afraid. Tell me. So I can be a part. So I can be with one accord. So I don't look, uh, you know, stand out like a sore thumb and embarrass myself. Praise God. And so we're going to get into the church discipline part. But he says in verse number 39, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak uh, with tongues. All right? So he talks about the order about speaking in tongues. But he says here, let all things. Did he say some things? Let's look at Let's analyze 1 Corinthians 4, uh, 14 and 4. He says here, let all things be done decently and in order. Now, does this apply to titles? Does it apply to, you know, how long I've been in the ministry? Or, you know, does it apply to, where, where does it apply? It applies to all. Praise God. I just want to make sure I explain it right. This Paul, Apostle Paul, here being an apostle to the Gentiles, this applies to all that are in the body of Christ. And all things must be done. Uh, allow all things, let me to permit or allow. So we should open the door for things to be done decently. And now we're going to talk about this. Praise God. And this is why we got to get into church discipline because we're in a time now where everybody calls certain things decent. You know, you come in and you know, oh Lord have mercy. Don't make me say it. You know, you come in and your clothes Oh, Lord, have mercy. Your clothes is hugging you so tight that I can see your naked. Is that decent? You don't have to, you don't have to be showing cleavage to be in decent. This is what needs to be taught. And we're going to get Mother Flowers on here. Praise God. And I wish I could call Mother Flowers right now. I, I really wish I could call her right now to get some help. And even when it comes to the men in the church, decent. You know, sometimes we don't know what decent is. With your pants sagging down, where people can see your underwear. To me, that's, you know, to me, we have to look at what decent is. In the world, we know what decent is. But we come to the church, and then we act like we forget what decent is. Praise God. And so I want to talk about today, church discipline. So decent is decent whether you know God or don't know God. Let's lay it out there. Because sometimes we try to make decent be a word that's only becoming to those that know what decent is. Now, we have to we have to look at this and analyze. Some people don't know what decent is because if they weren't taught it, they wouldn't know. But to a degree, all of us have an idea of what decent has to deal with. It has to deal with something being uh, properly, uh, aesthetically in order. Praise God. And so if your hair is out of order, you are out of order. And I just want to make it plain to you. You know, and sometimes we try to make it seem like it's some rocket fine. We got to go through, you know, a uh, theology class to explain about somebody not having things in order. We don't need to go through all that. It's plain and simple. It's as easy as ABCs and one, two, three. Jesus simply means uh, to be decent. Now, we're going to explain it, you know, dealing with decent. Some people, you know, uh, they don't understand that worship is vital to the life of the individual and to the whole church. It's not just, you know, one, my mom and dad and my mom and them, now I'm not using proper English, mother is bishop, I'm borrowing bishop words now, mother and those that were with her. But I'm going to say mom and them. Mom and them taught us you know, one spoiled apple will mess up a barrel. And so, a bump. And so sometimes we try to act like that principle don't apply in the church, but it does. One messed up mind running around like a renegade and doing stuff out of order, you won't affect somebody else. And uh, it's going to cause some problems, you know. It's, it's going to cause some problems, and it's going to cause some other people to be out of order. Praise God. And so we got to make sure, according to the word of God, that we discipline ourselves and be governed by the word of God. Right? So we're going to get that caller. I think that was uh, 
I'm gonna get that call, but I want you know, I wish I wish I could get more of the flowers on to talk about this church discipline thing because, you know, the older saints that you know, that's much older than I am have been in the church probably, you know, twenty thirty you know, twenty years before I got in the church. You know. So my thing they've been they had twenty years in prior to me coming in, praise God. And uh I haven't been there a short period of time, but it doesn't matter how long you've been there. Are you learning? And are you absorbing? And are you growing while you're there? That's what matters. All right? Doesn't matter about longevity so much. Because you got a lot of people just been in the way a long time. Praise God. And being in the way ain't going to get it done either. If you've been in the way and you ain't been doing nothing, you ain't been applying the principles of holiness, that ain't benefiting nobody. Praise God. And so, Doing things decently in order, we must have church discipline. Our church services should be conducted in an orderly way. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just teaching the class today. Even our church services should be conducted in an order way or orderly way. So we can worship the Lord and be taught by the word of God that comes from the Lord. Okay? Or come from the man of God that God has given him. All right? But those that are responsible uh, of setting up worship service, we have to make sure it has an order and a direction rather than chaos and confusion. You don't want nobody to come to your church and be confused about the God that you're presenting. Or, uh, you know, you're presenting to them, you know. And sometimes people can't see God for seeing uh, chaos and confusion. And God is not the author of confusion, but the God of peace. And so we got to set an atmosphere when people come in, not saved, want to be saved, that they're not distracted, number one. That's the soul of. Uh, motivated uh, desire is to set an atmosphere that a person can come and feel the presence of the Lord and receive of the Lord. But we got to be disciplined enough that the atmosphere is set. It's more than just music, making noise and jumping and shouting and dancing out and, and setting, you know, uh, you know, a worship atmosphere. But we got to set an atmosphere because we have to remember that the devil also don't want that soul to come to God. And if there's chaos and confusion going on, that can be a distraction, praise God. We got to make sure that we we doing it according to the you know word of God. And we got to make sure all things are done decently and order. Now, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians to talk about church discipline. You're going to find church discipline in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to talk about it. All right? Paul here, and we got to get out of here now. We're going to, we're going to just deal with chapter 5. We, we're going to pick it back up on when, but Paul condemned immorality in the church. If we don't deal with immorality in the church, it will run wild like a cancer, cancer and it will destroy It'll destroy even the innocent, praise God. We got to make sure that we uh, talk about these things. He says here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, it is reported commonly. Do anybody know what the word commonly has to deal with? Commonly, that it is reported. Paul says here to the Corinthian church that it's reported common that there is fornication among them. In the church? That sounds alarming, doesn't it? It sounds alarming to our ears because we say, well, we, we ain't the Corinthian church. It ain't happening in my church. You might want to check. Praise God. Sometimes we say, oh, no, none of this stuff happening in our ministry. You might want to check that out. Paul says here in the Corinthian church, it was commonly reported that there was fornication among them. And for such uh he says, and such fornication not is as so much as named among the Gentiles. 
that one should have his father's wife. And he says, and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourn. You ain't even repenting. You just jumping in the bed, out the bed, knowing that God wants you uh, married. Praise God. God wants you married. If you, it's better to marry than to burn. That's what they taught us the old bit. If you just can't hold on, you need to get married. And you know what I'm you messing up somebody's daughter and, and, and somebody, uh, or messing up somebody's son, you uh, or mess up your own life, praise God, and then be on your way to the lake. You just need to get it right. And this is what they taught us in the, the apostolics taught us, the old apostolics, they taught us that you need to get married. And he says here, I'm going to go ahead and finish this out. They were puffed up and not rather mourn that he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. Now, when we talk about this, and when we talk about church discipline, people don't want to talk about people being taken out, people being set down. We don't want to talk about that. But we need to talk about it. We need to set up and have a transparent, open forum conversation about, you know, these type of things that happen in our ministry. Hmm? And we need to talk about it because closing the door on it, running around, everybody, oh, Lord, have mercy. Everybody know what's going on, and you act like you don't know what's going on. That ain't going to get it. I'm saying when sin is in the camp, God going to make sure everybody knows what's going on. Because sin is not, if you won't judge sin, God will judge it. Praise God. I'm, I'm just telling you what the, what the Bible deals with. Every, every leader, every uh, representative that God called, when they didn't deal with sin like he told them to deal with it, he just moved them on out the way and he took care of the problem. Praise the Lord. And so we better deal with it before God has to deal with it. Because see, when God has to deal with it, some heads going to roll. Praise God. I'm just going to tell you like it is. I know this is not a popular topic to talk about. But when you disobey God, you got to give an account for that. Me, you, and everybody. Praise the Lord. And so we can no longer just turn a blind eye, you know, for fornication and different things that go on in the church. All right? But he says that this thing, this deed might be, the person might be taken away from money. He says in verse 3, For I verily, as absent in the body, but present in spirit, have judged already as though I was present. He said, even though I'm not here, I heard this stuff that was going on, and I'm, I'm going to deal with it while, just like I was there. I'm not there, but I'm going to deal with it just like I was there. Sometimes people hear about stuff, and then they say, well, I didn't know about it. Well, now that you know about it, what you gonna do about it? That, you know, Lord have mercy. I'm not trying to be funny or not, but what I'm saying is this: you know, when the being ignorant of the law does not uh, does not uh, make you uh, less accountable. You know, I didn't see the stop sign, officer. Okay, well I'm gonna write you this ticket so you can be on your uh, due diligence to be looking for the stop sign because you didn't stop and obey the stop sign. Praise the Lord. And so, same thing spiritually in the church. You can't just blow a spiritual stop sign and think, oh, well, because I'm saved, you know, you know, I speak in tongues, I, ain't, I don't have to give an account to anything. Oh, yes, you are. You, you don't have to give an account to it. Praise God. But look here now. He says here, and this is a real hot, top, hot button topic, you know, and I know some people going, you know, some people, you know, they, 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 they rub them the wrong way. But look at this, though. Paul says here, he says, though I was present concerning him that has done this deed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, my spirit, uh, with the power, I'm sorry, my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such a one unto Satan for destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ultimately, we're concerned about the soul. We're not concerned about the flesh because the flesh ain't going to never like correction. It ain't going to never like, you know, discipline. Our fathers and our mothers, they chasing us. 
because they loved us. So flesh ain't gonna like correction. But guess, guess what? It will, it will, it will once it, once it, they once the sin is dealt with, the person will love you and realize that you will, you meant it for their good. Praise God. You meant it for them to be in the kingdom of God and not out of the kingdom. So many people have left churches, left ministries. They don't go to nobody's church because they've been discouraged by not seeing things done. Speak to man in order. And you can, you can, you can, uh, you can disagree with me if you want. We can have dialogue on this, you know. But I'm not gonna go back and forth with you. the proof is in the pudding. I know people right now ain't going to nobody's church because they, they, they use uh, the church for an excuse or whatever the case is. They still gonna be without excuse because they gotta give an account to God because God didn't do it to me. But I'm just telling you the flat out truth is that people have been hurt, wounded. And they have uh, need to get healing, and they can't get healing until they get to a place where they can really see, um, you know, that the word of God is being executed. And when the word of God is being executed, people can uh, be healed. They can be, you know, they can cope with a, you know, uh, you know, a dissatisfaction or they disgruntlement. But people become more disgruntled when they feel like they don't have a voice and be able to say something about a problem. They become more disgruntled and say, well, hey, they don't care. You know, and, and I'm not, uh, I'm just being an advocate. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say one side is right, one side is wrong. I'm just laying it out there because sometimes we act like we don't understand the damage that this can cause. This can cause some serious damage when sin don't get dealt with. Now look at this now. He says here, deliver that person such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. So deliver them to Satan, so uh, it means to, you know, exclude them from fellowship. Oh, I think I, I think I might need to go now. Praise God. Now, Apostle Paul says here, until they repent, exclude them from fellowship. You ain't getting a testifying brother daughter, uh, preacher, whoever you call your title is, you ain't been to get up and be preaching. You didn't even get up and be doing nothing in in, in, in in the Lord's service that God have you ministering over. Praise God. You're not thinking, no, you're not going to mess up everybody here. You need to sit down and repent. Once you repent, get your house together, get your house in order, and get your life back together with the Lord. Then, you know, we, we can, we can uh, move forward. Praise God. But too many times, people see folks that's been, you know, oh Lord, been in mess all year. Praise God. <laughs> Lord, let me quit. Let me get out of here. People have been in mess all year long. And I'm not saying, you know, that they hadn't been talked to. But what I'm saying, it's some more than talking to need to be done. You, It's time for you to sit down. Praise the Lord. And that's something that, uh, don't happen as much in ministries today because people now got their roller skates on and they'll rollerblade over to the church to the do what you want to do ministry. But, you know, God has given me some uh, consolation and some uh, comfort in understanding that if they roll over to do what you want to do in church, that's one less problem that I need to deal with because if the person can't stand the correction that comes from God. The book in Hebrews says they're bastards and not sons. Now I'm giving you books. Let me go to Hebrews. Because see, my thing is, who wants to be pastors and bastards anyway? I'm just going to put it out there. Because sometimes what happens is we're trying to hold people that don't belong to God. Now, if you want to be a bastard, go ahead. But if you were sheep in the fold, David carried the sheep, he broke the sheep's leg, cared for that sheep, got corrected that sheep, and that sheep will stay with stay with the leader, stay with the shepherd. But when people don't want to act right, you ain't going to be able to hold them no way because they already got their mind made up that if they can't do what they want to do, they're going to leave anyway. And so I beg different with you if you're going to really uh, help them anyway. If God can't help them, you can't help them. And that's where we got to look at. We got to look at God is helping those uh, individuals through the word of the Lord. 
And if God can't help us through the word of the Lord, then it just won't, uh, you know, it just won't be much help for us. And so it's very, very important, you know, that we look at these things because uh, if we don't, we'll be trying to do more than God when it comes to pastoring and leading the flock. And God is, he's a free will, he's a loving God, but he'll let you choose if you want to go to the lake or not. So we have to, we have to also as leaders have to be at a point of understanding where, hey, if the person ain't going to hear God, they're not going to hear you. Now I'm going to Hebrews 12 and verse number 7. I'm going to go to verse, well, let me just read, let me just read it, uh, number 5. All right. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. He called him son. He says, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Praise God. He said, don't despise the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. It says, for whom the Lord loveth, he chastened. And he scourged every son whom he received. Praise God. Glory. I got to get out of here. I feel my health coming home. But I'm looking at this. Now, if he scourged every son he received, if ye then, in, if you endure and chasten, it says here, verse number seven, Hebrews 12 and 7, if ye endure chasten, God dealeth with you as with son. For what son is he? Whom the Father chases not. So if you be without chastisement, but if ye be without chastisement, where all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. He says, Furthermore, we have all had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much, uh, much, uh, not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of Spirit and live? So there it is, my friend. I didn't say it. So I don't want nobody to say, oh, well, you know, uh, Elder Newton or the preacher, you know, he, 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 he cursed and he used them bad language. The Bible says you're bad and not done. If you can't handle check. Discipline. Praise God. And I know with this COVID going on, uh, People that really want to be saved, they're going to do what's right. I'm, I'm finding this out. You know, hey, you know, I'm going to do what's right. My pastor tell me to get myself together. I'm going to get myself together. I'm not going to be fighting the man of God. I pray to God. I'm trying to go to heaven. Praise the Lord. This is, this is insanity. If I'm going to refute the man of God and talk about I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad, the devil is alive. Because you are not going to wind up in heaven disobeying leadership, disobeying the man and woman of God. You're going to find yourself in a place that's undesirable. And that's not where God intended for his creation and nor the people of God to be. The Bible said he come that you might have life and that you may have more abundance. You can have abundant life in Jesus Christ, but we all need this. I want to get down to 13. I want to finish reading this. He says, um, to deliver such one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. I'm in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 5 and 5. And he says that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want you to be saved. You know, a lot of people, you know, uh, I don't have an a, a in crowd, an influx of, of friends because I'm a Bible preacher. I'm a true preacher. Born and bred, apostolic. And I believe what the Bible says. The Bible is right and somebody is wrong. And so I believe the Bible that the Spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. We want you to be saved when the Lord comes back. Right? And the only way we can ensure that you be saved, we must have discipline. The word disciple uh, is derived from the word discipline. The root word discipline. If you are a disciple, you got to be disciplined. In, in, in Timothy there, he says that we must, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, walk and, and obey the one that has chosen us to be a soul. I'll get that later. But, but my thing is, 
what he's saying there is that we got to live to please the one that's chosen us to be the soldier in the first place. We're not living to please ourselves. We're living to please the Lord. And the word of God says in Psalms there, when a man ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. We need to find uh, we need to find our place back with God and stop trying to be in place with people that's causing us to be at, excuse me, causing us to be out of order. Stay with God. Go with God. Purge out. Oh, verse number six. He said, your glory is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaven the whole lump. That's what I wanted to get to. I need to get down to 13, but I don't look like we're going to make it. He says, a little leaven leaven the whole lump. Don't you know that if the, if, if, you know, one little mistake can mess up the whole thing? And sometimes we don't really see the damage that can be done until after it's too late. And then once it's too late, some damage is irreparable. If God don't repair, that soul is damaged for life. And who has to give an account for that? Nothing but the person that has accountability for those folks. And so we want we want to make sure that we talk about church discipline. And I know there were plenty of times uh, when we grew up, the older ones didn't want to be disciplined, and uh, mom and daddy didn't put them out. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you like it is. Mom and daddy, they didn't throw them away, but they put them out to make an example out of them and let them know you're not going to run this house. Praise the Lord. Because sometimes you got to put the devil out and let him know you ain't going to run the show here. You got to go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know people say, oh, you putting people out of church. You're not putting them out of church. You're giving them a choice to make. Praise God. You're giving them an opportunity to be corrected. Praise God. And I'm not I'm not advocating throwing nobody out of church. But what I am saying, you give that person an opportunity to make a rational decision. Because sometimes people don't really understand how the seriousness of the nature of an act and what what the repercussion and the effect, the domino effect, and the ripple effect that can take place if I keep letting you run this way, disobedient, and fornicating all over the place, and other folks trying to be saved. You know, you're going to mess up the mind of somebody that's pure. And you're going to have a greater sin on your hands if I sit here and let you mess up everybody else. Praise the Lord. And so, I'd rather get rid of that bad actor. I'd rather get rid of that bad apple. Which one of you got a barrel of fruit and let the fall and stay in there? I just want to ask you, a, uh, you know, I just want to ask you a hypothetical question. You got a ba- you got a barrel full of potatoes and one is rotten. Do you leave the rotten one in there or do you get rid of the rotten potatoes? And so Jesus always dealt with the disciples and dealt with humanity in parables. And I put it back in your lap. How many of y'all got a, a, a barrel full of apples? And you got three small ones, and you let them stay. And you just let them stay in the mix under the bottom of those. No, you got to dig up, get all them good ones out the way, and take them three out, and set them to the side. Praise the Lord. And so that's you know what we need to do when we when we're disciplined. Some things need to be put to the side so it can be dealt with in its proper context. Can't deal with everything openly, every situation can't be dealt with in, in an open form. But it does deserve some attention. And that's what we hear to share, share with the people of God today. Purge out that old leaven that you may become a new lamb of life. For even Christ our par- Passover is sacrificed for us. He said, therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven. Now, he says now, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven. Okay. Now, we got to take a look at this now. What was the old leaven? You know, the old leaven, <laughs> they prepared the bread, you know, without yeast. Because they didn't have time to wait for it to rise. When the people of God was in Egypt, they had to eat unleavened bread because they had to cook the bread in the herd and they couldn't sit around and wait for it to rise because yeast, I mean, the Lord told them, told Moses rather, to get the people, uh, ready and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. All right? 
And so they didn't have time to wait for it to rise because the yeast represented sin. Now, I want you to look at this. I did my studying already. I want you to take a look at this. The yeast represented sin. Praise God. Anything that represents sin, God don't want to have no remembrance of it. God don't want to have nothing to do with sin. Praise God. And neither should we. I hope I made myself clear today. You calling yourself a Christian, you calling yourself saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost still and water baptized, and you is swallowing you. Oh, you wallowing in sin? God forbid. You need to repent. And all that if I'm in sin, I need to repent. I'm not I'm I'm not I'm not making room for nobody to stay in a wrong state of mind. Praise God. Because I got a title, excuse me. Hello? Hello? I got a title? Sin's got to go. Praise the Lord. Hello? Sin has to go. And if we not going to, uh, oh Lord, we ain't going to call sin what it is. Sin is what God said it is. Sin is not what man said it is. Praise God. Sin, yeast represented the symbol of sin, and they were commanded to clean out all they have. You will see it in Exodus chapter 12. Reading your study time, Exodus chapter 12. But we don't have in, in chapter 13. But Christ is our Passover, our perfect sacrifice. And he delivered us from the slavery of sin. Sin causes us to be in bondage. Anytime you can't worship the Lord freely, freely in praise and worship service, evaluate because every way can be a sin. The Bible says, you know, oh Lord. The Bible says in Hebrews uh, 12 and 1, you know, it says, you know, uh, let, let me just get it because it, 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 so many scriptures rolling in my mind. But I, I, I want to get uh, Hebrews 12 and 1. Uh, let me just get it real quick. There's so many scriptures rolling in my mind. He said, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight. And the sin. Every weight is not a sin, but every sin is a weight. Let us lay aside every weight in the sin which do us easy to shut us, and let us run the race that is set before us. Uh, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus. If we not going to follow the words of Jesus. We're not going to follow the Bible. We're not going to do it like Jesus told the disciples and the apostles to do it. He told them that the word of God is proper for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, which means to be complete and thoroughly furnished unto all new words. Huh? And so we need to make sure we get rid of the old leaven and let us not keep the feast of the old leaven, huh? Uh, neither the leaven of malice, wickedness, but the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And that's why we brought it up today. Church discipline. We need to deal with truth, right? We need to start stop talking about all these cookie cutter messages. That ain't helping nobody change and get their life right with God. I can tell you joy is going to come in the morning. But if you really going to get the joy that comes from God when you lay that sin to the side and repent. And so these are the things that strengthen the church. When I was growing up in the ministry coming up and our bishop and my pastor well on it. And they drilled this all into us. We need to drill it into our young people. That righteousness shall exalt a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people, praise God. So I want to encourage you that God is not trying to strip everything from us, but he's really trying to give us life and that more abundance. We only can get it through the gospel, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the only way we can get it, he says here, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. 
That's verse number eight. Verse number nine. You shall wrote an epistle not to keep company with fornicators. I'm going to read that again. 1 Corinthians 5 and 9. Now, you get your Bible, whatever translation you want to get, it just says the same thing. I wrote unto you, I'm dealing with the King James Version. I suggest you get a King James Bible. But if you want to get a New English translation, NIV, uh, whatever, revised version, get whatever kind you want. When it talks about sin, it's going to say the same thing. I wrote unto you in an epistle. It was so bad in the church. Paul had to write a letter. That's how out of order. That's how much the church needed discipline. Because they were worshiping this, this the Corinthian church, they were worshiping this goddess Diana, and they were having prostitution in the church. I'm not going to get off into that. But I just want to just let you know they have some they have some problems. Just like we got problems today in the church. And then, you know, we try to act like the problems don't exist. The problems exist. Because these babies are popping up from somewhere. And you're not gonna tell me if there's no husband and the baby pop up, that ain't fornication. I don't care if it was a I didn't mean to, it was an accident or I made a mistake. You ain't repentant. So when repentance is in order, the only thing you got to do, you still can be saved, just repent. And get on that altar and let God help you. And stop sleeping with these men that ain't your husband. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let me, uh, no, I'm a, I know this is going to be here. This is going to be a controversial topic today. We, gonna, we got some more for you this week. And I hope, uh, you know, this is a meeting of class here today. Because if you think you're just going to eat, uh, you know, the salad, and French fries, it's about time we get to this here. Because this is what's causing some serious hurt to the believers today. And us looking around and smiling and trying to be your friend, that ain't gonna get the job done. Let me read this up. Just stay with me. Two, two, two and a half more minutes. Stay with me, two and a half more minutes. I wrote to you an epistle, not to company with fornicators. Yet, not altogether with the fornicators of this world, nor covetous, nor extortioners, nor idolaters, for then must need, for then must need you go out of the world. You wouldn't even need to, you know, come out the world and get into the church if you're going to stay in fornication. This is what Paul's saying here. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother, there it is. We didn't got to the meat of it. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covenant, covenant, or idolater, or railer, or drunkard, you a wine bill, drinking wine, or extortioner, with such a one not to eat. With such a one, no, not to eat. Don't even go out and eat with them. And that was the old, um, I'm not using cliches, but I'm just going to use what my mom and I use. And this ain't, this ain't a spiritual indication. This is just a, this just a fact about people. And the behaviors of folks, birds of a feather flock together. And when you see people flocking to sin, it makes you wonder if they if they are okay with it. Are they in agreement with that? Now you answer the question, because I'm not okay with it. I don't agree with it, and I certainly don't want to find myself engaging with someone that. Uh, being disobedient, being rebellious, and not heeding to uh, my leader's teaching. Well, you're not going to hear my bishop, and then you ain't going to hear the encouraging words I'm trying to give you. Then it's time for you to be turned over to God. That's what that's what Paul was saying here. 
And sometimes, you know, that's something the pastors, they, you know, they don't want to do it, you know. And I understand, because they know if God has to deal with it, it's, going, it's, going not going, it's not going to come out so favorable all the time. And so they try to work with the people, work with the people, work with the people, work with the people. But at some point, it's going to line up in God's hand that they don't repent. I would say this. He says here not to eat with them. Have you been going out eating with fornicators? Don't answer. Have you been la laughing and talking and texting people in their mess? Don't, don't, don't say nothing. Don't answer. Evaluate. You know. Yeah, we got to love folks. I'm not saying you got to be mean and not, uh, not appeal to people who try to encourage and talk to them. But I'm not going to make you comfortable in your sin. Praise the Lord. In verse number 12, he says here, For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do ye not judge them that are within? He always in the church talking about people. You know, and I'm, I'm not saying church, though. I'm just saying we in the church, we looking at people and making judgment calls on people in the world that are doing things. They are supposed to be doing what they're doing because they're not saved. But if you claiming to be saved and you doing what the unjust is doing, you ain't supposed to be doing that. Praise the Lord. We ain't supposed to be backbiting. Uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. We ain't supposed to be. Uh, who are you all to sit down and you know, have a discussion about something? But we shouldn't be doing it in a negative way. And one thing that I don't do is things that I can share with, with people already. I can share that again and I'm not back by it because I told you about it. Say, hey, Lord, I done told you about, you know, the, the, the things we can bump heads on. And so my thing is, uh, it's not back by it. But for you not to know about it, and me talking about something that you need to know about, I think the Bible says you got an all against them. think you have an all against your brother and sister. Go to them and them alone. You're the first one that needs to hear. And then after it's been talked about again, when it gets back around you again, you can say, oh, yeah, he already told me. Yeah, he already told me I, I don't listen. Okay, then nobody's backbiting on you because you know you are here. You know, you know, like we tell our children, you didn't listen, so now you fell off into a hole. Don't blame nobody. Praise the Lord. And so that's something that you already got to talk. But he says here, Paul says here, for what have I to do with them that are uh, also that are without? Do you not judge them that are within, but them that are without God judge? So we, you know, we have to realize those, those people that's not in our ministries, in our churches, in our congregation, you know, people that's out in the world. Don't have don't have God in their life. God judged them. Praise the Lord. They not even in the church. But you that are in the church, just pray for them. But he said, therefore, put away uh, from among you yourself that wicked person. That wicked person just will not repent. The Bible said, don't you you can't make them repent. It said, tell them to repent. And if they won't repent. You only have, they force your hand. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory be to God. They force, they force you into uh, church discipline of saying, well, brother, sister, you know what? Uh, you know, I, I can't, I seem like I can't help you here. Now, we gave, we've given you the word of God. We've given you spiritual counsel. We've given you, you know, uh, our love and we've appealed to you and approached you in a loving manner, in a non-offensive, aggressive manner. And we just trying to encourage you so you don't wind up in a place that none of us want to be in. But if you won't adhere to the, you know, to the doctrine and to the teaching of the apostle, then it says, put away from among you yourself that weak person. Now, there was a few times in ministry I saw people put out. I'm going to tell you now, it wasn't a good thing, but there was a few times I had to see it. Because the person just wouldn't listen. They just wouldn't obey. They just wouldn't listen to the pastor. The pastor went through all kinds of crazy things and trying to help the person. The person just got up and kept causing problems. And so, 
I'm telling you, I witnessed it with my own eyes. Uh, you know, that my pastor had to uh, make a decision. You know, he had to, uh, you know, get, uh, get the person out. But the Bible tells us not to criticize people by stopping them or making rash decisions. This is a process, y'all. Church discipline is a process. So the minute I got to church and I did something wrong, pastor didn't say, kick him out. He didn't do that. Taught me. Taught in the Bible class. Gave me the scripture. Helped open a mind to stand. Worked with me. Loved on me. Cared for me. Nurtured me. Nourished me. But if I was just going to be rebellious and wrong about you, <laughs> it's time to go. Praise the Lord. I don't know how you all, you know, Look at the word of God. But when it gets to the point where the word of God and God can't help you, then it's just time for you to be turned over into the hands of God. And that's what we want to share with the people of God today. However we are to judge sin or deal with uh, uh, sin, uh, that can hurt us. So other folks' sin can hurt other folks. Some people say, well, that was they sin. Why is it bothering you? Well, sin is like a cancer. That's why Jesus, I mean, that's why the Lord in the Old Testament, he didn't allow Achan sin to be in the camp. They had to burn everything. They had to get rid of everything because it was contaminated. And sin is just like that. It's contagious. Paul's instruction was not to use and to handle uh, trivial matters. We don't use the word of God to take revenge on people. Nor do we apply it to to individual problems between beliefs. But it's for dealing with open sin in the church. When there is an open sin, this is why a private sin, you know, the pastor can talk with that person, counsel with that person, help that person with something that they're dealing with and everybody don't have to know. Praise the Lord. I, I just want to make sure I make it plain. I'm covering all my bases here today in church discipline. Everybody don't have to know you messed up. Praise the Lord. But now, if you just going to mess up and, and put it painted in everybody's face, then the pastor got to deal with you openly. And so, these are the different things that we must look at in church discipline. So, we're going to go a little bit farther. I think I went a little bit farther than I desired to today. But we're going to pick it back up on Wednesday, if the Lord will. So, we ask you to stay with us on the safety side in that CD. Uh, with no further ado, uh, I just want to say, stay with us. Please let us know if you have a comment or response or remark. Even if you'd like to come on the broadcast with us, text us and let us know so we can set it up so you can be on uh, our future broadcast uh, to share and express um, how the broadcast may have blessed you or how uh, you might want to share your testimony or how the ministry may have blessed you. Okay? And so we ask that you to do that. I want to say we're going to be out tomorrow. Consecration starts um, tomorrow. And uh, we're going Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And so we'll see you at the 7 o'clock hour uh, at the PPC Milwaukee uh, church location. Or you can visit us online, PPC Milwaukee, on YouTube uh, or Facebook. Please uh, take a look there if you want to watch us online. PPC Milwaukee. Search for it in the YouTube search bar. And subscribe to us so you can automatically get the notification. Again, we want to say God bless you. I'm your host, Elder Gregory Newsom, with the Faith in God Internet TV. Until next time, we want to say God bless you in Jesus' name.